Great. Well, thank you all so much for coming. We are at the Ashland School District Canvas Family Night this evening. This is, like I said, our elementary school version. We're really excited to see that we have over 300 participants already here at six o'clock, right on the dot. And we're super excited to share with you our new product and how we think um, this tool will be really helpful for learning. So my name is Katherine Holden. I'm the Associate Principal at Ashland Middle School. I'll be hosting tonight and kind of helping facilitate the evening. With us tonight, we have Lindsay Gates. She's gonna be our kind of lead presenter for Canvas. She is the interim principal at Bellevue Elementary School. And we're really grateful for the work that she's done this summer to get us up and going. Brittany Hardy is a math teacher at Ashland Middle School. She'll be our kind of support Canvas presenter tonight. And she also has been leading the district in this work all summer. We also have Alex Rocher here. She's our support Canvas presenter and a teacher at Ashland High School. And then we have Michelle Cutteback, who's the principal of Hellman Elementary School with us tonight. And she'll be doing an overview kind of introduction for the evening. We also have Jim Westrick here with us this evening. He is a school board member for the Ashland School District. And we're really excited that he was able to join us and he'll be helping kind of monitor the question and answers and helping um, ask some questions himself as a parent and as a school board member. Jim, would you like to say just a couple words as we get started? Sure, absolutely. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for coming out tonight. This is uh, clearly not the way any of us wanted to start the school year. Um, but I have to say, I think based on the information we have, this, this is the most sensible way that we need to start the school year. Uh, we all have a lot of learning to do uh, in so many different areas, but as one of your elected representatives to the school board, I have been in a position to see all the work that has gone in to what you're gonna to see tonight, especially uh, on the part of your child's teachers and principals and education assistants and everyone in the Ashland School District. Everyone has been working pretty incredibly hard uh, to make the best of a bad situation. And I think the important thing and the only thing I'd really like to point out before we start is that every one of your child's teachers and staff members and principals every one of them, just like you, are also trying to juggle. They're trying to juggle their job. They're juggling their own families, their own children, their parents, their own health. And I wanna keep that at the forefront of our minds because when things start to feel overwhelming or frustrating, and they will, they absolutely will in the coming weeks, um, I think it's important for us, if we can, to extend to them just whatever patience, whatever kindness you can, knowing that not a single one of us chose this reality that we're in right now, but that every one of us is working to make the best of it. So with that in mind, I wanna thank you all again for coming. Um, it's gonna be a very unique school year, uh, and I'm very, very impressed with the work that's gone into where we are today. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Catherine Holden, our Associate Principal at Ashland Middle School. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for pointing that out. Like you said, uh, teachers are working very hard and we're hoping that tonight we'll just give folks an orientation. So we're not thinking of this evening as instructional necessarily, but it will be a great first peek at the overview of the campus um, dashboard and template so that you can start to sort of imagine how your student will interface with this and how you can support your student. So I'll turn it over to Michelle now. She's gonna give us an introduction to the product and also some resources that are available to us. Thanks, Catherine. Welcome again, everybody. Uh, I'm Michelle Cutterback, Principal at Hellman, and it's my pleasure to be here tonight to help um, introduce you to some of the resources we have and to share a little bit about Canvas, our, our new learning management system. And I just wanna give us a little bit of background for those of you who uh, were in the Ashland School District last year or in a school district anywhere, but particular in the Ashland School District in the spring, uh, you know that we utilized Microsoft Teams. And um, while it helped get us through in a pinch, in an immediate switch, there, there were a lot of obstacles and bumps along the way. And um, we quickly learned that it wasn't the ideal tool for what we were trying to do, but it did get us through the end of the year. And by the end, that road was a little smoother uh, there were still some, some bumps, but we learned a lot and we started to become better about uh, using Teams in the way that we could, but it really became apparent that we needed something different, that we needed something that was going to be that smooth road uh, so that we could just focus on the learning and the connecting with each other and not have to worry so much about all of the obstacles um, 
in the platform that we were trying to deliver instruction through. So what is Canvas? Canvas is what's called a learning management system. Um, you might hear it referred to as an LMS, but it's a learning management system. It's very different from Teams. Teams is a collaboration software and Canvas is specifically designed for education. It is used at a lot of universities around, around the world and in the country and um, also has a strong K-12 platform. We had a committee help us make this decision over the summer. We looked at a lot of different uh, tools and Canvas came out as a strong leader. There's also um, a lot of regional um, use of Canvas. So a lot of districts in the Valley are also using Canvas. And so we can uh, use our resources together to learn and figure out how to make this work the best for all of our students in the Rogue Valley. So tonight's agenda, we're gonna uh, give you just some resources that as you are navigating how to log in, um, maybe you need tech support, maybe you need a device, we're gonna share some resources for that. We have a brief orientation to Canvas itself. You'll get to see what it looks like from the elementary view. Um, later, we'll have a middle school one and then tomorrow night we have the high school view. And then we do wanna save time for questions and answers at the end. So if you have questions that come up, please use that Q&A feature in Zoom and you can type your question. We'll be sifting through those and um, getting to those at the very end. So to start with resources, if you are in need of an internet connection at home, um, Ashland Fiber Network, if you're within their service area, is providing a free connection for all Ashland School District staff and students. This is for new customers. Um, so if you already have Ashland Fiber Network, it's not gonna now automatically be free. But if you don't have internet and you need to get access for your child for uh, distance learning, please reach out to them. You might wanna take a picture of this slide. That's what this little camera indicates. If you see that on a slide tonight, it means it has some information like contact numbers that you might just wanna snap a quick picture of uh, so that you can reference it later. This um, offer is just until we are able to be back in school the way that we prefer to be with everybody together. Uh, so it won't last forever, but you can get access for distance learning for your child um, through Ashton Fiber Network. So we just wanna thank them for that. That's a great service. If you are needing a device for your student, uh, you can check out a device through this through the district. We did email out um, student specific surveys for you to complete if you needed a device and it also had other information on there about meals and other needs that you might have. So if you filled that out, great. We're in the middle of deploying all of those devices right now. You probably received an email with pickup directions. And so you wanna go pick that up here in the next few days. If you have not received that, it should be coming soon. But if you did not fill out that, that form and you do need to borrow a device for your child, you can contact your school's office and they can send you the link that will be specific for your students. So you can fill that request form out. And then our wonderful tech department will be quickly getting a device ready for you. Um, as far as support, once you have that device and you're trying to navigate Canvas or sign on to access the distance learning, um, you know, you can troubleshoot with your teacher. If it's something that's Canvas specific, like you can't find, figure out where an assignment is or um, you're having trouble uploading something like that, the teacher designs those assignments so they could be a first point of reference. But if you're having other technical issues like your login's not working or there's something wrong with the school issued device you have, um, you can call our tech support office. And again, this is that picture slides. So you might wanna take a picture of this so you have it later. But this is our tech department. And so that's a direct line and you can get um, in the moment support. We also have a way for you to fill out an online support request ticket that where you can pro provide specific information and they will cue that to the right person to answer that question for you right away. Um, so that the way that you access that is through your school's website. There'll be something called a distance learning portal. And so uh, that would take you to something that looks like this. And you can see here, this is where students can log into Canvas. There are also some how-to guides and videos that, that 
they could access or you could access. There's also a way for parents to log in through what's called a parent observer account that we'll get into on another night or send out some videos about that. Um, it does not give you all the access that a student might have, but it does um, allow you to see multiple students' classes at the same time through your phone or other device. And again, links to some more how-to guide videos. This is that submit report support ticket right here. So if you clicked on that, that would take you to fill out a form and then tech support would get to you. There's also lots of great resources like frequently asked questions. Um, so that is another tool that you can And there's use. a couple questions about this, even this um, PowerPoint, which yes, it will be posted and that um, particular portal that Michelle was just on is the place where all the resources will end up. So we can certainly share this after um, the family nights are done. And that would be the area that you'd wanna go to to be able to access those resources. Great. Okay, Canvas also has um, a lot of resources, which was another reason why we chose it, because it had a great support for families, teachers, and students to um, have support videos and help. So this website, community.canvas or lms.com, um, will take you to a lot of different videos that could help. And um, you can also just do a quick Google search of Canvas learning management system, and you'll find a lot of a lot of different resources. But if you go to this website, the community.canvas, it'll look like this. And you can click on the knowledge drop down menu, which will take you to guides and then Canvas in particular. And then that's where you'll find a lot of different videos um, that could answer some questions that you have. All right, so that's it for kind of the overview and the resources. And now I'm going to turn it over to Lindsay Gates for the deeper look into Canvas. All right. Um, first of all, I am so thrilled to be sharing Canvas with you tonight. Um, Canvas is your one-stop shop. It has so many um, amazing features, and um, I hope that you and your child will be just as excited as we are. Um, the screen that you're looking at now is called the dashboard. So once you're logged into Canvas, this is the screen that will first um, show up for your child. Um, there will be, you know, most likely at least three of what we call courses. Each of these is called a course. So you'll have your child's classroom course. So if your child was enrolled in, um, you know, Mrs. Palmazano's third grade classroom, it might say Mrs. Palmazano's third grade. It would not say elementary template. Um, there's also going to be a, a school resource course. And there will also be the, um, the district librarians are working on designing a library course as well. And that's where you'll be able to access um, different features through the library and, and even check out books. Um, while we're on this dashboard, I wanted to just point out a couple of things in the account, um, the account um, icon. So Canvas is a very communicative uh, tool and it wants to send you notifications for truly everything. So at some point you're going to want to visit um, you know, this account settings and, and go to notifications. And this is where you're going to be able to determine how often do you want to receive those notifications? Um, to what device do you want to receive those notifications? What kind of um, things do you want to be notified about? And the other um, important place to maybe take a look at is uh, this link to settings. And this is where you would be able to um, add your own email address, or if you are hoping to get, you know, if you're wanting to get text notifications, um, you would be able to add your phone number through here as well. All right, so now back to the dashboard. So for your child, when they first come on to Canvas, they're going to be clicking inside of their course. So now you get to take a look inside. All right, so we have designed the um, elementary template to hopefully be as um, inviting, intriguing, um, and yet very user friendly. And so the, um, all of the kids at the elementary level, they will basically really be looking at the exact same screen when they're logging in. Obviously the banner at the top will match the site that 
uh, your child is enrolled at. Um, I, I wanna, um, actually I'm gonna switch here. So I'm gonna actually point out first, before we start to get into some of all of the different, where do you find the assignments? I wanna talk about something down at the very bottom of the homepage. This is what we call that homepage. The very bottom here, this is where you're gonna be able to find your child's teacher's contact information. And even one of, to me, one of the greatest features is a link directly to your child's um, Zoom account. So if your child is working on an assignment throughout the day and they get stuck on something, they'll be able to click on this button and they will be directed to your teacher's waiting room. And then the teacher will be able to, you know, bring them in and answer those questions. Um, and that would be, you know, during, during the school day. They're also going to be, all the teachers are gonna be offering um, office hours on Wednesdays. Um, I, the times will vary depending on the teacher. Um, but this is an opportunity for um, possibly not only your child, but if you had some quick questions that you felt like you um, need answered, you would basically be able to access that through this Zoom link as well. I would highly recommend that you make an appointment still, even though um, that link is open for you, I would recommend making an appointment because I, you know, you could potentially sit in the waiting room for a while if you um, don't have a scheduled appointment. Um, the educational assistants will also um, be reachable um, during their scheduled hours as well. Okay. I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to ask real quickly, maybe for a point of clarification. I think we have several parents that are right now trying to, to find a link to get into Canvas on their own on either the school site. And so maybe you can explain, is that something they should be doing now or that that is, or, or is it even possible? No, that's a great question. Um, no, they are not set up yet with their accounts. I believe all of that is gonna be coming out to them um, on Friday with the information on how to log in. They won't actually have access to their child's um, classroom until the first day of school. Teachers are still working um, very hard to get all of those things ready. And so the actual, what you're looking at here, you won't have access to until the first day of school. But I believe starting Friday, you will actually, um, oops, sorry, I'm still in my, student view, you will be able to, I believe, get into the dashboard, but you just won't necessarily see the course for your child's class. Okay, and how will we parents get that information so we know, for instance, how to get to Canvas and how to log in? Will that be an email sent to us or just posted on the website? It is. It's going to be an email that's sent to you um, or to the parents, and it will have the um, web address to get to that portal and then the login information for your specific child. Great. Okay, so we'll keep a lookout for that sometime next week, right? That's, that's correct. Um, this, it, yeah. No, no, this week it'll be coming out even tomorrow or the next day there will be communication about how to log in, um, but login won't be open until Friday. So we'll give people kind of the weekend to play around with logging in and then their actual courses would be published and available to them on Tuesday the 8th. Great, okay, so we'll get information soon about how to do it, but we won't actually be able to log into Canvas until Friday. Is that what mm -hmm. you're saying? Okay, great, thank you. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna go back into the course. All right. Um, so we addressed then how to contact the teacher, get help from the teacher. So now I want to get into these great colorful buttons that are right here on the home screen. Um, I'm going to start off actually by skipping this, this first one, the today's learning, and I'm going to go to this week's plan. I would say this is something as a parent you're probably going to maybe want to take a look at. Um, because this is going to give you like a, a week at a time glance as to um, the activities that your child might be doing. It'll have the instructional block times. Um, these aren't the assignments specifically. They won't be linked. So you can't, you won't be able to click on this. But if you were looking at this view as a parent and then you wanted to get into the actual assignments, these little buttons over here 
are going to link you directly to Monday's lessons. All of these assignments that are listed over here, that will take you directly to those assignments and then you can access them that way. So it's just a nice way for you to kind of have an overview of what your child's week might possibly look like. And the teachers are going to be updating this weekly so that you'll have that information for you. Anytime you're needing to navigate back to that home page, right over here on the left hand menu screen, you're going to see home and you'll just click on home and that will take you right back to that opening screen again. So um, the next thing that I want to get into is um, a couple of these other buttons. This is a way to access um, previous lessons. It will take you to um, what is called the modules and you will be able to see um, two weeks worth of like past lessons. So after about two weeks, it starts to get to be way too much on the screen for the kiddos. And so we'll probably be um, sort of hiding them. They're still accessible to you, but you would just need to contact the teacher first. And so if for some, you know, if your child has been sick um, and you need to get caught up on some previous assignments, this is where you might go. Um, online programs that your child may be accessing um, can be found here. Class agreements, this is something that the teacher and the students are going to be kind of building and designing those first couple of weeks during that soft start. And then of course, there will be some parent resources for you here. This is maybe where you could expect to find, you know, a class newsletter or um, different upcoming things that might be happening that um, uh, you can have access to. All right, so now the button that I would say your child is probably going to be clicking on the most, and that is this today's learning button. What this button will do is when they click on it, it will direct them straight to that day's assignments. So you can sort of see these are like these placeholders that tell you at what time a certain activity is happening. So at the elementary level, we're starting our day with a, a morning meeting. So it'll be a live Zoom synchronous call. And um, at that point, the teacher will have an opportunity to um, greet your child, uh, talk a little bit about the day's learning targets, play a little bit of a um, you know, game to kind of build community. And then from there, um, then you'll start moving into the different content areas throughout the day in the schedule. So you'll see the placeholder that was the subject and the time frame, And then under that, these are the actual assignments or possibly discussions or even just informational pages that the students will be accessing as they're working through their day. Um, you know, don't feel like they have to keep up with these timeframes. We are here to be as flexible as we possibly can. However, I will say the more they can be participating and staying on the schedule, you know, the more they're going to be able to engage with their classmates. Um, so I thought we would maybe take a look inside of one of these assignments. So here's an example of, you know, a, a possible math assignment. You're going to see at the top, um, there's going to be an up, this blue bar, I've actually already practiced doing the assignment, so that's why it says resubmit. But you can see there's so many different options for teachers, and that's what I was talking about, those, those incredible features of Canvas. It allows us to embed you know, instructional videos, so we can record videos that we're sending to students, even if they're, you know, younger kiddos and we just want to be able to talk to them um, about the directions on the assignment, we'll be able to embed videos right there for your child to watch and all they have to do is click on the play button. Then down below that, you might see an assignment um, that's built into the page. There's so many different ways that they're gonna be able to complete the assignment and then get them back to the teacher. So I want you to know that we are being really flexible about this. Um, so let's say um, you wanted to download and print this assignment. So right here is the link to do that. You would be able to just download that assignment and now it's right down here at the bottom of my screen and I can open that up and I can print it. 
Also know that the schools are working on developing, um, you know, kind of take home learning kits. And this is where, you know, we're hoping to minimize the amount of printing that you need to do. And our hope is to get you all of those things already printed so that you don't need to be doing that. Um, I will, um, I'm gonna walk you through submitting an assignment in just a minute, but I'm actually gonna um, back up just a little bit. And I wanna show you a couple, uh-huh. Go ahead. We have about five to seven minutes or so, okay. and then we'll try to take some questions. Mm -hmm. All right, great, perfect, thank you. I know there's so much to cover. Um, I wanted to just show a little bit of like a discussion board so you can see how the icon is just a little bit different. The little image is a little different. So this would be like an interactive discussion board where there's a video that the students might watch and then there's directions for them on how they actually are gonna post a reply and a response to that discussion. So, so many great features out there. Um, but I'm short on time, so I'm going to actually kind of walk you through what it might look like to submit an assignment for your student. So if you are opening an assignment, you're going to see at the top this um, little blue bar that says submit assignment right here. Now there are so many different ways that you can submit this. So um, you can again see the image of the screen, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually submit that assignment so that I can start interacting with it. If your child's doing this on paper and pencil, great, they don't have to be looking at the screen for this. If I wanted to um, have my child actually type inside of the box their answers, that's a possibility for you so that you don't need to be taking a picture. If you have a maybe a younger kiddo, or I would even say this is great for all K-5, um, they could actually record a video. So when they click on this media button and they click record, the camera is going to pop up and they can record themselves talking about their assignment. And that's what the teacher will see on the other end. Um, you can still, just like you did in the spring, take a photo of the assignment and you can upload that file here. And then there's one other great um, way that they can interact with the assignment directly on the page. And um, that is an an that's annotating on the desktop. Now, if, you're, if your child is working on a tablet, you won't have to do the following steps here, but there are a few steps and we have a video tutorial and we're gonna be teaching the kids how to do this in these first few weeks. But I just took the assignment and I embedded it right here and that's the file I wanna work with. Then I'm actually submitting the assignment, which feels really odd because we haven't done the assignment yet. Why are we submitting it? But then we click on submission details and view feedback. So when I do that, now what's happened is I have all of these tools up here at the top and I can actually interact with that assignment directly on this page. I can use the pen tool and I can you know, write things on there, which obviously is way easier on a tablet, right? I can type with my text and I can type things in to the box, right? I can use the, um, this one's great, to make a little point. So a child might say, you know, I'm having a hard time figuring out this one. So they might say to their teacher, you know, please help. So there's so many different features here um, for the child. And then when they're finished doing this, they can just resubmit that assignment. And now it's gonna be sent to the teacher with all of their things filled in. So if they didn't wanna work on the paper, um, this is another option for them as well. Really quickly, I just wanna cover where, how you know if, the, if you have received feedback, like your, your teacher is gonna be providing feedback to your child. And that is going to be, you can find that, um, either in the course itself, there'll be this little section that's called recent feedback. And you'll be able to click on that assignment or your child will be able to click on that assignment and they'll be able to see the feedback from the teacher. And just like your student was able to um, attach um, video files or text, the teacher can also do the same thing to be providing feedback. So there can actually be, you know, not live dialogue, but pre-recorded conversation back and forth. And then students are even able to resubmit assignments if a teacher is asking them to make some corrections and try again on something. 
So we're hoping to make it very interactive um, back and forth. So that is the benefit to finding a way to submit all your assignments through Canvas rather than emailing assignment to your teacher. Um, because at that point, they don't have these same features to be able to interact and provide feedback for your child. I know I went very quick. So and I'm sure there's probably questions. There are some questions, but you did a great job, Lindsay. I think that was a perfect overview for folks to just get a taste. We know that not everybody was able to learn everything that Lindsay pointed out to us, but we just wanted to make sure that people got kind of that overview. Um, here's one quick, easy question. Somebody just now asked, what's the best internet browser to work with Canvas? Do you want to take that one, Lindsay? You know, we've been using um, Google Chrome um, primarily. Um, I don't know, that might be a question, somebody else might know which ones won't work. That might be a better way to answer that. Oh, I have. I, I'm sure Canvas would tell you just about any internet browser works because that's their design for the mass population. As a software developer, my stock answer is anything but Microsoft Edge or anything but Microsoft Internet Explorer. If there are other software developers out there listening, you may disagree, but it, in my experience of trying to, to get things universally acceptable, it feels like uh, Chrome is great, Firefox is great, Safari is great, and then as soon as I get to Microsoft Edge, I get all these, these issues. Um, I, I also want to say thank you as well. This is, you know, obviously this is not intended for any of us to learn how to do any of these things tonight. It really is just an overview so we see really that it can be done and we'll get there. Um, I want to reinforce that this slideshow will be posted on the website for everyone to be able to see. Um, and I've got a, a great big picture overview question because I saw a couple of people asking this. Uh, maybe this is a good question for Catherine or, or maybe even for Alex. But I know as a parent, this can feel very overwhelming um, because we've got PowerSchool, we've got Zoom, we've got Canvas, we've got the Hellman News, we've got all these different ways that information comes to us. And I, if you could spend a second, just say, how are, how are these? I mean, how, is, how are these related? Specifically, I think Canvas, PowerSchool, and Zoom, because none of these are replacing any of the others, but they're, they're kind of complementary. And, and, uh, and maybe you could say a little bit about that. Sure, I'll, I'll start. Um, definitely the feedback we heard from parents in the spring was a need for you know, simplifying. And so that was one of our goals when we went into investigating our different products. Um, Canvas is gonna allow us to embed a lot of our supplementary learning programs. And we know that that was something that was hard for um, families was keeping track of a number of different programs and passwords and usernames. And so we're really trying to prioritize bringing everything here into Canvas. What you said about Zoom, Zoom is a video conferencing software. And so we do need a way to connect with our students synchronously. Um, but that is again why we are bringing our Zoom link into our Canvas homepage. That's um, consistent across all the district levels as well. So although we're using Zoom, it's gonna be a link that students can always go to that teacher's homepage in this template and find that link and be able to travel to that Zoom meeting. So people won't need to be keeping track of Zoom links or those links won't change. As long as they can navigate to the Canvas homepage, they should be able to enter that Zoom meeting. PowerSchool will still be helpful um, because uh, that is, you know, at the middle school and the high school, that is where um, proficiency scores and letter grades and scores are shown. And so we will encourage folks to continue to check uh, power school for some of that information as well. But yeah, we are certainly trying to simplify it as much as possible. But you're right, Jim, those three things serve a slightly different purpose. Um, so if I'm correct to sum up, your power school is doing kind of what it always did, right? You've got scores and maybe attendance as well uh, for part mm -hmm. of it. Um, Zoom is really just video conferencing and it's integrated with some of these other tools. So you might not even know it's different and that's fine. And then Canvas was the missing piece. That really is just a place where teachers can put assignments and recorded videos and things like that as a repository. It's almost like a file cabinet that then students and parents can access and see these things. And we didn't really need Canvas as much in the past because everyone was face-to-face -face in the classroom and, and could experience it in real time. And now that's not the case. So Canvas is really just a place to store assignments and things like that. Is that a good way of thinking about it? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Um, I also just wanted to add that uh, Canvas is going to allow the teacher to put the links for their Zoom videos um, up so that those students that are accessing their learning asynchronously will have access to them um, after the actual class meeting. Excellent. And Alex, that's a great segue to the next question that I have. I think a lot of parents were thinking this. Um, so we have live lessons and then we have recorded lessons, or if you really want to be fancy, we can call them synchronous and asynchronous. But if your child uh, cannot make the live lesson for any reason, will all the live lessons be recorded so they can watch later if they would like, or even if they just want to rewatch to pick up something they missed? Yep, I see that, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> like the flight attendant, I'm going to need an affirmative answer from you. Yes, <laughs> yes, they will be. Um, the only thing that might not be recorded is the morning meeting uh, because that's also a social emotional learning time. So sometimes students might share um, more vulnerably during that time. So those won't be recorded, but the academic live lessons will for sure be recorded and posted for other people to access if they miss that live session. Excellent. The other, another question, um, and you can all feel free to jump in. I don't want to hijack things, but I've been monitoring the questions as we go. And there seems, I think the big question in, on parents' mind, especially myself, is how much time are we expecting our kids to be looking at a screen in any given day? Um, and are there alternatives? So it's kind of a two-part question. How much time are we expecting them to look at a screen? And if we don't want them to look at a screen that much, can we just get paper packets uh, and things like that? Uh, mm -hmm. or, or not. Yeah, I'll answer just a little and I think Michelle can probably add to it for the elementary specific, but you know, we've talked a lot about um, even the Oregon Department of Education guidance helps us understand sort of the difference between teacher facilitated learning, where we might be giving um, through synchronous teaching or an instructional video, giving directions, giving guidance, facilitating an activity, helping students get started, making sure they understand the directions and the instructions, making sure that they understand where to find something in Canvas. So there will be the need for that. And I think um, families will find that helpful. But then there is this other category called applied learning. And the guidance really encourages us to think about how do we then have our kids go off and apply their learning or go deeper in their thinking and you know, potentially step away from the computer or do an activity that is not computer-based. Um, because we all recognize that we certainly don't want our students to be on the computer all day long. We want to encourage them and facilitate um, activities that draw out different skills and take them away from the computer, but then allows them to get support throughout those applied learning times. So at each site, it'll um, you know, be adjusted a little bit depending on the level and the appropriateness of the timing. But that's been our goal is to really make sure we're balancing those two things. Excellent. And tonight we saw, I think, the student view of Canvas. We had a great question. What, if you just maybe in, in one or two big picture things, what is the big difference between the parent Canvas, what they would see if they log in as a parent versus logging in as a student? All right. Um, they are going to be what's called an observer. And so um, they'll be able to um, see what assignments their child has, but they won't necessarily be able to interact with that assignment. They will be able to contact the teacher, you know, through the inbox, which is this feature right over here, this tool. Um, and um, they can, um, Alex, you might have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they can see if their child has submitted assignments, um, but they won't actually be able to interact with the assignment itself. Um, I, haven't, I haven't looked at the parent view too much yet, but um, I do think that um, being able to review what your student is doing and being able to see exactly what that schedule is is going to help parents keep kids on track and help them make sure that they're getting what they need to get done. Um, they just can't submit the assignments from that perspective. It has to be from the student account. Yeah, and I'll just add, I think that the main benefit from setting up that parent observer account, and you, you don't have to, I mean, but it's, some, it's another resource you could have, is if you have more than one child in the Ashland School District. So if you have multiple children, your parent observer account allows you to see their different courses all through that one app instead of having to ask, you know, if they're an older student asking them to log in for you or logging in for each individual student and looking at their course. So it puts it all in one spot um, that you can see right away. Oh, that's great. And I, I also want to say we have got some great questions. Like we're, we have, uh, I'm looking at over 50 questions right now and they're great. I'm I'm planning on going through these as well. We'll prioritize and I'd love to make just a, a kind of an FAQ with a lot of these questions and post those on the website as well. Do you think we can do that? 
because I know we can't answer them all live right now. And if you're like me, you wouldn't remember it anyway, because this is a lot of information for one night. Um, there's a great question. I love this one. This is where the rubber meets the road. Why we have a parent ask, will Canvas or PowerSchool be the place to find out what assignments your student is missing? I'm going to let Michelle answer this for the elementary specific or Lindsay. I think this is slightly different for the middle school and high school. And so I don't want to make a general statement around that one until we're at the middle school and high school levels for that. Yeah. So the question is, will they go to Canvas or PowerSchool to access assignments? Uh, if they want to find out what assignments their child is missing, should they look at Canvas or PowerSchool? What, what is really like, that's where the rubber meets the road. Okay. Thank you. So for elementary, it's Canvas. So for um, elementary, we don't really utilize the grade book in the same way that the middle school and high school do, where teachers enter each grade for those assignments and parents can see if it's missing and what they received. So that would definitely be through, through Canvas for elementary. Excellent. Catherine, I'll let you take it now. I've been talking way too much. Um, there's a couple here that I thought we should address. Um, one person asked, you know, will Canvas already be downloaded onto the district devices? And I would just wanted to clear that up. The nice thing is that we don't, different than Teams last year, Teams was an app that was on the device itself. Canvas is on the browser. So really it's just a matter of navigating yourself to that site. You can, like Michelle said, go through the portal that's off of your school website. But as long as you can get yourself you know, through a browser, I do recommend Chrome, it's been working really good for me. Um, then you, you can get yourself there and then you're basically in the program. Um, and it's not something that has to be um, on the device in the same way that Teams was last year. So that's just one clarifying. Um, yeah, um, I'll just add to that, Catherine. I think a lot mm -hmm. of elementary students will be issued iPads, um, at least initially um, for the younger grades. And so, yes, the Canvas app should be, um, put onto the district iPads. And if it's not, our tech department has a way to push that out um, without you needing to bring the device in. So if you if you got one and you realize it's not on there, um, just use that tech ticket or contact tech and let them know that, um, that who you are and that you need the Canvas app pushed out to your iPad that you borrowed. Okay. And, and even to expand on that, if you have your own device, but it's a tablet or an iPad, you can download the app and still log in. Um, your student can still log in through that app. It doesn't have to have been a um, district device. There was one clarifying question about office hours and making an appointment. Um, somebody asked, does that mean that we have to make an appointment for our child or how do we make an appointment? So I just wanted to clarify that Office hours generally will be open for drop-in though, correct, Lindsay? Um, and then if they were wanting to make an appointment, how would they go about that? Yeah, so at that point, then you could um, either, you know, use the inbox tool, and this is where you could send a message directly to the teacher. And if you're an observer, you can actually do that from your own device as an observer. You can send a message to your teacher saying that you would like to schedule um, an appointment with them, and um, you'll schedule that time and then you'll still be accessing them during that or using that exact same link um, to get a Zoom call. So you're still going to be going in, but you'll go in at that time that you and the teacher have prearranged. Great. Um, one family did ask um, about notifications. Can we adjust each or can we adjust all notifications for our three or four students at once, or do we need to adjust those for individual students? Okay, so as that, that would be another benefit to being having the observer role is because if you are setting the notifications as the observer, then you're setting them for, um, well, I believe you're setting them for all of your students. Um, but if you're actually accessing it from each individual student account, then you would have to go in and set each student. Mm -hmm. I think that's, yeah. Okay. I'm still kind of sifting through just trying to prioritize some of the Canvas questions. Um, there has been a couple about music or PE. How do those content areas sort of fit in with that daily schedule? You bet. So we've built that into the today's learning plan. And so you can see there will be a placeholder for um, PE, music, library, art, depending on what's happening that day. So it might just say PE 1155 to 1225. 
And then this page right here would then send the child to um, a page, whether it's, you know, you know, probably most likely a, a, a pre-recorded video that the PE or music teacher have uploaded to that page, and then the child will be able to watch and follow along with the activity in that way. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of other questions um, that I that will certainly put in the FAQ, and I know are important to a lot of parents, especially regarding things like attendance and some of the technical pieces of what hardware do we need and, and things like that. Um, and what would they get from the district? Um, and we can certainly get into that, but I know we're running short on time. We'll make sure that we post that. Uh, and please look for emails too from the school district. There should be another one coming out very soon from the superintendent and we'll reiterate everything around attendance uh, and things like that as well. And this is another good one, follow up on the parent observer account. Are multiple parent observer accounts possible for two household families? And that's where we, I think, chose, or we thought that a parent observer account would be good because that is uh, parent specific. So you can have um, two or probably even more different parent observer accounts as far as I know. Excellent. Um, great great okay. question. And I know that a lot of parents share this concern about, uh, especially at the elementary level, kids getting a chance to develop socially, emotionally, and how well, how we can address that, especially if we're not all in the same room together like we'd like to be face to face. So maybe you can address that a little bit. Absolutely. Um, so built into um, the schedule each week, there will be um, a social emotional lesson that will be taught, um, whether it's a you know program called Mind Up or Second Steps. There's a variety of different ones. Um, the child development specialists at the sites are working on building a library of resources and videos. They're also planning to, you know, spend time trying to pop in to work with um, classes, um, but they would also still be available to schedule various appointments with. At that point, you'd probably want to go through the classroom teacher and then the teacher will reach out um, to that child development specialist um, so yeah. that they can set up a time. And I'll just add to that, Lindsay, I think that's why we, we specifically built time in them for the morning meeting every day because we know that um, connection and community is so important. And so those morning meetings will be focused on building community and getting to know each other. And um, the, a lot of those emotional social skills and connections will happen through that morning meeting time. But I do know from working with teachers um, all last week and this week that there it is their high priority and they're really looking at engaging ways to design lessons and use breakout rooms for group projects and group work so that kids can have that connection through their uh, academic time as well. Great. Well, we have just a couple more minutes. I wanted to clarify a couple of people have asked again. We have referenced it, um, but we know people joined at different times. So the website that we're mentioning is that distance learning portal. Um, so basically you will be able to go to any of your school websites and there's a quick links area. It's not published yet, so you can't see it tonight, but within the next couple days, it's going to be an area that says distance learning portal. And that will take you into that area that Michelle did show earlier that has a sign in for parents, a sign in for students. It has the support ticket and the phone number, and then there's resources and links. And so, for example, tonight's um, webinar, this will be, this is being recorded currently, and that's where that link will go so that people can watch this at a different time or um, encourage people who aren't able to come this evening to be able to watch it at a different time. And so we're just really wanting people to kind of go to your school website, find the distance learning portal under quick links, and then kind of enter through there to find all of your resources. Um, so when I did have a question about when does school start, so I just want to make sure we clear that up before the evening is over. Our first day of school is September 8th, so that's the Tuesday, um, a week from today. And you will be getting information from your students' um, teachers or the administration about specific details. We, we can't go into the details for the different five elementary schools here tonight, but that will be coming through email to parents. Um, later this week so that you can get a good sense of what the first day of school will look like. And um, to just, I know a couple people came, so we want to just cover this one more time. Your login and password information will be sent to you in the next couple days through email as well as a paper mailing. 
but you will not be able to actually access Canvas or even try to log into Canvas until Friday. But Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, you can try to poke around. However, you won't be able to actually see any of your courses until they are published um, on Tuesday, September 8th, the first day of school. So that might be our wrap up for this yeah, evening. Could I, I maybe ask you one last thing? Because I know, especially as with the first day being September 8th, number one, I wanna make sure we all understand this is a soft start. So I don't want, I know it feels, I'm overwhelmed and it feels very strange to, oh my gosh, school is starting and it feels like I don't have what I need yet. And I'm a very type A kind of personality. So I get very stressed when I don't have that. Um, but it's going to be a soft start. It's it, we're going to we all we're all learning together, and we're going to make sure we help each other along. And I, from what I've seen from parents, I think right now just a couple nuts and bolts, especially at the elementary level. Um, I've seen several questions now about wanting to know when will I know who my who my child's teacher is, and when do I will we find out about school supplies? You know, do I need to buy a pink pearl eraser this year? Things like that. So those I think are kind of nuts and bolts maybe at least, uh, should they just look in their email coming up for that or, or, or what? Yeah, I can answer for Bellevue. So um, yeah, the, your child's teacher was emailed to you. So it'll tell you, the email should say what, who your child's teacher is. The class lists were still posted on the front doors of the school and the teachers are in the process of this week, um, probably in the next day or so, if not already, preparing an email to send out to introduce sort of um, the, the supply list and the first day of school ex kind of activities that are planned. Excellent. And that I imagine. Email and, and it will be it will be coming in the next day or two. Yeah. Right. Because I think just to clarify, I'm assuming this is the same at the elementary school level, um, but that's where they would get access to that zoom link for that kind of first day of school. Correct. Because since they won't be in Canvas up until Tuesday, they will receive that information in an email. That's correct. If your child is not able to access Canvas on the very first day, that's all right. The Zoom link is the starting point. They're gonna you know, get to know each other a little bit before they dive too heavily into Canvas. Yeah, and I just wanna reiterate what Jim was saying, the soft start and really all of our sites have been prioritizing that we want this to be an enjoyable experience. We want it to be a kind experience. We want our teachers to enjoy themselves. We want certainly our students to enjoy themselves. Um, we want to take it slow so that we can enjoy it and be able to do it well. Um, and so really knowing that these the first week and two is about connection and getting to know our kids and getting to know what they've been up to and hearing from them and seeing them. Um, some folks you know, did ask, are the synchronous sessions required? And I just wanted to clarify that. Um, we know that different families will have different schedules that they have to be following, but we also want to emphasize that those synchronous times will be valuable times to connect your student with their teachers and with their peers. Um, and so that is why we move towards having more synchronous teaching in this new school year. So I want to thank everybody on the panel tonight. So in the Zoom world, we give a little thank you, thank you like this. Our teacher leaders have been amazing this summer. And I also want to thank Jim so much for helping moderate tonight's evening. So thank you all for attending. We did have over almost just under 500 participants tonight. So that feels like a great turnout. And we're gonna take about a five minute break. Um, we will be offering our middle school one here at seven o'clock. There was one question about whether you should come back if you also have a middle school student. Um, I would encourage you to so that you can get a peek at the template. It does look different and some of the kind of um, objectives and weekly overviews are slightly different. Um, but if you want to take a little break, I encourage you to, and our introduction will be similar. So those first 10 minutes will be very similar until we actually get into the template and start answering questions from a middle school perspective. So thank you all so much for joining us. And if you are signing off for tonight, um, we look forward to starting to see you more and connecting more with you as the school starts. Hmm. <laughs>